Good afternoon, class. Today, I will discuss how intra-entity asset transactions affect the consolidated financial statements of business combinations. I will also describe in detail how to eliminate various intra-entity transactions. So, learning objective 5-1, understand why intra-entity asset transfers create accounting effects within the financial records of affiliated companies that must be eliminated or adjusted in preparing consolidated financial statements. So intra-entity transactions. Companies that make up a business combination frequently retain their legal identities as separate operating centers and maintain their own record keeping. Inventory sales between the companies must be recorded. The seller records revenue and the buyer enters the purchase into its accounts. For internal reporting purposes, recording an inventory transfer as a sale or a purchase provides vital data to help measure the operating efficiency of cash enterprise. From a consolidated perspective, an intra-entity transfer is the internal movement of inventory that creates no net change in the financial position of the business combination taken as a whole. In producing consolidated financial statements, transfers are eliminated. Consolidated statements reflect only transactions with outside parties. The entire impact of the intra-entity transfer must be identified and then removed. So basically, the two companies um, make up a business combination. You want to be able to separate the, the operating activities of both companies so you can effectively assess how they're operating. But unless they're dealing with a third party, how they look to the outside eye as a, as a uh, total company that's consolidated together. So learning objective 5-2. Demonstrate the consolidation process to eliminate intra-entity sales and purchase balances. So, sales and purchase intra-entity examples. Arlington Company makes an $80,000 inventory sale to Zirkin Company, an affiliated party within a business combination. So, both parties record a transfer in their internal records as a normal sale or purchase. In the consolidated financial statements, all intra-entity inventory transfers must be eliminated. A consolidated worksheet entry, TI, um, which uh, the acronym TI is used for transferred inventory, will remove the resulting balances from the external reported figures. So sale and purchase entry entity entry, entry TI. Cost of goods sold is reduced under the assumption that the purchase purchases account usually is closed out prior to the consolidation process. Total recorded intra-entity sales is deleted regardless of whether the transfer was a downstream from a parent to a subsidiary or an upstream from subsidiary to a parent. So here you have the consolidation entry TI, uh, debit to sales, and a credit to cost of goods sold um, purchase component. This eliminates the effect of an intra-entity transfer of inventory. So learning objective 5-3 explains why consolidated entities defer intra-entity gross profit and ending inventory and the consolidated procedures required to subsequently recognize profits. Removal of, so intra-entity gross profit, so removal of a sale or purchase is often just the first step in a series of consolidated entries necessitated by the inventory transfer. Assume that Arlington acquired or, or produced this inventory at a cost of $50,000 and sold it to Zirkin at the indicated $80,000 price. From a consolidated perspective, the inventory still has historic, historical cost of $50,000. Zirkin's records reflect the inventory at the $80,000 transfer price. But because of the markup, Arlington records show a $30,000 gross profit from the intra-entity sale. So because the transaction did not occur with an, with an outside party, recognition of profit is not appropriate for the combination as a whole. So despite entry TI, the ending inventory is inflated by 30000 causing cost of goods sold to be low and profits to be high. For consolidation purposes, the expense is increased by this amount through a worksheet adjustment that properly removes the unrealized gross profit from consolidated net income. And so here we have an entry entity gross profit, which is entry G. So all inventory remains at, at year end. Um, nothing was sold. So if all transferred inventory is retained by the business combination at year end, entry G eliminates the effect of the seller's gross profit that is unrealized in the buyer's inventory in year one. So here you have a debit to cost of goods sold for 30000 and a credit to inventory on the balance sheet to remove the gross profit in any inventory created by the intra-entity sale. So because there was a profit, you have to do entry TI and now entry G to eliminate the profit. The profit. 
So entry G portion of the inventory remains. So transfer inventory held at year one is recorded in separate statements at more than historical cost. So with a gross profit rate of 37.5%, 30,000 gross profit divided by 80,000 transfer uh, price, retained inventory is stated at $7,500. So 20,000 times 37.5%. So that's more than its original cost. So ending inventory, intra entity gross profit elimination, entry G, is based on the amount of transferred merchandise retained by the business at the year end. And so consolidation entry G for year end one. 25% of the inventory remains, and this is replaces the previous entry. It's a debit to cost of goods sold for $7,500 and a credit um, to inventory to defer the entry entity cost uh, gross profit in any inventory at the year of transfer. So here they they've, they've uh, retained a portion of the inventory. Learning objective five dash four. Understand the consolidation process for inventory transfers is designed to defer the intra-entity gross profit remaining in ending inventory from the year of transfer into the year of disposal or consumption. So an intra-entity gross profit year following um, following the transfer, which is year two. So after entry G for the 7500 of the overstatement remains in the separate financial records of the buyer and seller. The ending inventory portion of the intra-entity gross profit must be adjusted in two success, successive years. Number one, from the ending inventory in a year transfer, and two, from the beginning inventory of the next period. So in the example of Arlington's sale of inventory to Zirkin, the $7,500 intra-entity gross profit is still in Zirkin's inventory account at the start of the subsequent year. So the overstatement is removed from beginning inventory in the financial statements with entry G. The asterisk indicates that a previous year transfer created the entry entity gross profit. So the buyer, the buyer's cost of goods sold and the seller's retained earnings account as the beginning of year two contains the entry entity profit and must be reduced in entry asterisk G. So consolidation entry asterisk G year following transfer, which is year two, the retained earnings beginning balance of the seller is debited and the cost of goods sold is credited. And this is to remove the retained earnings of the gross profit in the beginning inventory and to currently recognize the profit through a reduction in cost of goods sold. So entry asterisk G removes the 7500 from the beginning inventory and increases the current net income. The entry entity gross profit in any inventory um, so that the, prof the profit is reported in a period when a sale to an outside party actually takes place. So after year one consolidation, the $7,500 gross profit remains on this company's separate books and was closed to retain earnings at the end of the period. So entry entity beginning inventory profit adjustment downstream sales when the parent uses the equity method. So worksheet entry TI and entry G are standard regardless of the circumstances of the consolidation, but entry asterisk G defers um, if the original transfer is downstream or the parent applies the equity method for internal accounting purposes. So then the investment in the subsidiary account replaces the parent's beginning retained earnings in a consolidation entry for asterisk G. So here we have a downstream transfer entry asterisk G. So using the equity method for internal reporting, the parent, number one, recognizes the beginning entry gross profits and two, defers the intra entity ending inventory gross profits. And so debiting the investment account allows parents net income and retained earnings to appropriately reflect the consolidated balances. And here you have a debit to investment subsidiary and a credit to cost of goods sold. And this is to recognize the previous deferred entry entity downstream inventory gross profit as part of the current year net income when the parent uses the equity method. So this is how entry G changes under the equity method. Let me objective 5-5 explain the difference between upstream and downstream intra entity transfers and how each affects the computation of non-controlling interest balances. And here we have the um, upstream subsidiary to parent and a downstream parent to subsidiary. So according to FASB ASC paragraph 810.10.45-6, the amount of entry entity profit or loss to be eliminated is not affected by the existence of a non-controlling interest. 
complete elimination of the intra-entity profit or loss is consistent with the underlying assumption that consolidated financial statements represent the financial position and operating results of a single economic entity. Elimination of the intra-entity profit or loss may be allocated proportionally between the parent and the non-controlling interest. Consolidated accounts affected by the intra-entity inventory transfers. So normally the accounts um, that are affected are the revenue accounts, cost of goods sold, net income attributed to the non-controlling interest, retained earnings at the beginning of the year, inventory accounts, and non-controlling interest in subsidiary at the end of the year. So intra-entity inventory transfers equity method example. So top pays $400,000 for 80% of the voting stock of bottom company on January 1st, 2017. Acquisition day fair value of non-controlling interest was 100000 So that's representing the other 20%. Top allocates the entire 50000 excess fair value over book value to adjust a database owned by bottom to fair value. The database has an estimated remaining life of 20 years. So the intra-entity inventory transfers equity method example, uh, the subsidiary reports net income of 30000 in 2017 and 70000 in 2018, the current year. Dividends declared are $20,000 in the first year and $50,000 in the second. A $10,000 intra-entity receivable and payable exists as of December 31st. So Exhibit 5.2 intra-entity transfers represents uh, this activity for both, for both uh, years, 17 and 18. So an Entry G example. So recognizes gross profit in Entry G recognizes gross profit in 2018. It reduces cost of goods sold or the beginning inventory component. Reduction in cost of goods sold increases current year net income by 4,000. Um, gross profit is correctly recognized in 2018 when the inventory is sold to an outside party. And so, so looking at the previous slide, you had gross profit remaining at the end of the year of $4,000 in 2017. This entry is to, a, this to remove the 2017 entry entity gross profit in the inventory from seller's beginning balance. It recognizes gross profit in 18 following sales to outside outsiders to use the equity method and entry entity sales were downstream. And so here you have a debit to investment in bottom and a credit to cost of goods sold. Following using the information from uh, 5.2 entry entity transfers. So downstream entry TI and entry G, G uh, eliminate TI elements. The entry TI eliminates the entry entity sale and purchase. So sales was debited for 100000 and cost of goods sold is credited for 100000 to eliminate current year entry entity sales and purchases. Entry G defers unrealized gross profits remaining at the end of 18. Cost of goods sold is debited for 6000 and inventory is credited for 6000 to defer the entry entity gross profit and in ending inventory. And again, this is the activity for 18. from 18 following uh, exhibit 5.2, the transfer price and the gross profit remaining in inventory. So net income attributed to the non-controlling interest. When an intra-entity intra transfers are downstream, deferred intra-entity gross profits relate slowly, solely to the parent company and have no effect on the subsidiary or outside ownership. The non-controlling interest share of consolidated net income is unaffected by the downstream intra-entity profit deferral and subsequent recognition. So these items are important downstream. Intra-entity transactions upstream inventory transfers. So a different set of consolidation procedures is necessary if the intra-entity transfers are upstream. Upstream gross profits are attributed to the subsidiary. So bottom, uh, not the parent, which is top. Uh, because the intra-entity sales are upstream, the 4000 beginning intra-entity gross profit deferral no longer involves a debit to the parent's investment in bottoms account. So here, as of January 1st, 2018, 16000 of transfers remain in TOPS inventory, and 4000 gross profit is unearned. Bottoms beginning retained earnings are overstated by 4000 The gross profit from 2017 and the intra-entity transfers. A credit to the cost of goods sold increases the consolidated net income to recognize the profit in 2018 from sales to outsiders as follows. And so consolidated entry G for upstream uh, retained earnings of bottom is debited and cost of goods sold is credited to remove the 2017 intra entity gross profit and inventory from the seller's beginning balance and recognize the gross profit for 2018 following sales to outsiders. 
top uses the equity method and intra entity sales were upstream. So again, for upstream uh, inventory transfers, entry S. Entry S eliminates a portion of the parent's investment account and provides the initial non-controlling interest balance. The entry removes stockholders' equity accounts of the subsidiary as the beginning of the current year. And so you have a debit to common stock for $150,000 and a debit to retain earnings for $306,000, a credit to investment in bottom for $364,000, and a credit in non-controlling interest of the 20% in $91,200. So consolidation downstream versus upstream transfers for entry G. So here, what we've just discussed is this is an illustration of the differences um, in entry G for downstream and upstream. Both entries are to um, remove 2017 entry entity gross profit from sales beginning balance and recognize the gross profit in 2018. You also have downstream versus upstream transfers for entry S. This illustration shows the differences in the two, depending on if it's a downstream transfer from parent to subsidiary or upstream from subsidiary to, to the parent. So effects of alternate investment methods of consolidation. If the parent uses either the initial value or the partial equity method, many of the consolidation procedures are identical to those used in the equity method except for two. Consolidation entry C is required in periods subsequent to acquisition to convert the parent's beginning retained earnings to a full accrual consolidated total. And consolidation entry G corrects the overstatement in the subsidiary's beginning retained earnings and appropriately recognizes the profit in the current year. So that's the end of this presentation. Uh, please read Chapter 5. Thank you.